ADS-B provides information about aircraft such as identification, current position, altitude and velocity through an onboard transmitter. ADS-B provides air traffic controllers with real-time position information that is in most cases more accurate than the information available with the current radar based system. With more accurate information, air traffic controllers will be able to position and separate aircraft with improved precision and timing. This next bit of footage shows how the system is in use. As an airline passenger, you may barely notice the changes taking place over the next 10 years to improve your flight. But you will appreciate the increased safety and delays as the next generation air transportation system is adopted. To best illustrate the benefits of NextGen, let's first look at how your flight, say from Los Angeles to Washington, is managed today. As your plane pulls away from the gate and gets in line, your pilot is talking to controllers in the LAX tower for critical routing information. After takeoff, a Tracon controller steers the pilot through maneuvers to rise thousands of feet while covering about 100 ground miles. At about 23,000 feet, your pilot talks to another controller at Los Angeles Center, who directs the plane to its final cruising altitude of 35,000 feet. Across the country, your plane follows other planes, like cars on an interstate highway. As with cars, the route is dictated by what's on the ground. Your plane must pass over radar fixes, generally not the most direct path. And every time the plane crosses an airspace boundary, your pilot changes radio frequencies more than 25 times cross-country and makes adjustments in the flight, speeding up, slowing down, and changing direction. Bad weather over, say, the Midwest will force your plane into inefficient flight paths and keep other planes on the ground, creating delays that ripple throughout the country. When your plane begins the slow descent into Washington, your pilot steps down, levels off, and speeds up, while also moving around to safely align with other traffic on the way to the runway at Dulles. Now, let's look at how NextGen will improve your flight. Improvements kick in as your plane leaves the gate. Surface traffic management on the ground makes things simpler, safer, and more orderly for both pilots and tower controllers. For one, they spend less time talking to each other on the radio. This reduces communications errors as digital data communications, similar to text messaging, expedites clearances. The order of departure is set automatically, reducing long waits and enhancing safety. As the plane heads to the runway, pilots and controllers each have a real-time GPS map of all ground traffic with such tools as ADS-B and ASDX. This greatly improves airfield safety through a reliable shared view of the plane's surroundings, particularly during bad weather. During takeoff, Precision RNAV and RNP procedures allow multiple departure paths from each runway, which increases airport capacity. This same precision gets your plane quickly out of the busy lower level airspace to cruising altitude while saving fuel. At 35,000 feet, GPS enabled RNAV, RNP, and ADSB allow planes to fly closer together without any loss of safety, which increases airspace capacity. Meanwhile, aircraft fly more direct paths that account for wind, destination, traffic, and weather. Weather, which now accounts for 70% of delays, becomes less of a problem. That thunderstorm over the Midwest that causes so much trouble today will be easily handled when shared network-enabled weather information is fused into decision-making tools through SWIM. 
data communications, so useful in the airport, is also useful in the air as it reduces radio frequency congestion, errors, and delays. As your plane lines up for arrival with other planes, its place in line is planned hundreds of miles in advance. Instead of the current step-down approach, tailored arrivals and then continuous descent arrivals allow a smoother descent into the airport. The more precise landing paths allow steady descent with reduced power. This cuts time, fuel, noise, emissions, and holding patterns. As your plane comes in for landing at Dulles, Data Communications relays the runway exit point, assigned gate, and taxi route to the pilot, so you quickly arrive at the gate doors, exit the plane, and pick up your luggage. As a next-gen passenger, you may notice a smoother flight, but what really gets your attention is being on time more often. You also know flying is safer and more fuel efficient, and that's what matters from gate to gate. Well, this new technology sounds great for pilots and passengers alike, what's in it for us radio enthusiasts? Well, thanks to the wonders of the internet, data is being uploaded to the internet as we speak, making all of this data that we just heard of available for us to view. This is possible due to a number of enthusiasts having ground receiving stations and sharing their collected data. Right now on the screen you can see some aircraft arriving into and out of Hobart. This data is being received from my base station at Claremont. There are heaps of websites where you can view aircraft movements. Most of them are free. There are also lots of apps for smartphones as well. The info available on the aircraft is pretty much identical to what you, an air traffic controller can see. Take a look at this quick demonstration on how to check out aircraft. We'll use a busy area over Europe as the example using planefinder.net. I will put some info on the screen at the end of this presentation for you to jot down so you can look what GPS and ADSB combined with enthusiasts and their ground stations make available for you. You may have noticed at the start of this presentation I mentioned the word multilateration. A definition of multilateration reads as follows. Multilateration, also known as hyperbolic positioning, is the process of locating an object by accurately computing the time difference of arrival of a signal emitted from the object to three or more receivers. Tasmania was selected as the first area in Australia to have statewide coverage of this new technology called Wide Area Multilateration. What this means is that controllers at Hobart, Launceston and Melbourne Centre have real-time views of aircraft movements both on the ground and at high-level airways due to the use of the 14 ground stations scattered around Tasmania. The ground stations have been positioned in such a way that both on the ground at Hobart, Launceston and Devonport airports, as well as high level, there'd be at least three ground stations that can accurately determine the exact location of an aircraft at any given time. This is groundbreaking in that it enables all aircraft, 
whether they have the current ADS-B type transponder or the legacy type radar transponders on board can still receive full-time coverage from Melbourne Centre, Hobart Towers and Launceston Tower. So in summary, ADS-B provides real-time GPS coordinates to ground stations giving on-the-spot locations at any given time. The 14 ground stations around Tasmania that form the Wide Area Multilateration Network provides coverage for all aircraft regardless of whether they have the new ADS-B installation or whether they're still relying on the older style radar installation within their aircraft. This new technology is a real bonanza for radio enthusiasts, aviation enthusiasts and anybody interested in generally looking at where aircraft are at any given time. Here are a few websites that you can jot down and you can have a look at them on the internet.